We're grateful for this opportunity uh, to be invited to write a review of the gluten-free case and free diet for the treatment of autism. Uh, this truly was a team effort. My co-authors are listed there. The reason for conducting this review was that the gluten-free case and free diet has been popular since the early 1990s. In fact, there's some reports of dramatic um, anecdotal reports of cures. In addition to that, this diet is widely used, but there's not strong empirical support. So the purpose of the article was to provide an overview of the state of the recent evidence regarding the use of the gluten-free casein-free diet for the treatment of individuals with autism spectrum disorder and to help guide clinical decision making and to suggest some areas for future research. So the gluten-free casein-free diet was first identified for use in schizophrenia. It was believed that there's a possible genetic effect that results in what's called a leaky gut syndrome. This results in an overload of gluten from wheat and casein from dairy. It's been posited this causes high peptide levels, which may produce opioid-like effects. And these opioid effects can be manifested in behavioral symptoms that are commonly seen in autism or the broader category of autism spectrum disorder. There's also some thought that there may be undiagnosed gastric conditions and sensitivities that are caused or aggravated by ingesting casein and or gluten. And discomfort or pain may be manifested by externalizing behaviors. Some of those include tantrums, screaming, aggression, and even inattention to tasks, again, which are all commonly seen features in autism. There's a critical need to le learn more. We reviewed the literature from 2005 through February of 2015. We organized it into four sections. We wrote, had summaries of research articles, group experimental intervention studies, including randomized clinical, clinical trials, case reports, and group observational studies. We began with a scoping search to gain broad perspective of the relevant literature, and there is a lot of literature related to this diet. The search was led by Dr. Nancy Schaefer. She is a research librarian at the University of Florida. It included 19 databases. It yielded 491 articles. There were 290 after duplicates and non-English articles were removed. There were 11 reviews, seven group experimental studies, but only five randomized clinical trials. There were five case reports, and these included rich anecdotal accounts, so we decided to include those, even though case reports aren't always included in review of the literature, and we're aware of that. There were four group observational studies. So some of our impressions were Given the diet's popularity, surprisingly, there were few rigorous trials. And we understand that. Our research team actually conducted one of the randomized clinical trials of the diet, and we do firsthand understand how difficult these trials are to conduct. So the majority of the reports were reviews or reviews of reviews. But we are heartened to note that there are more noted during recent years. And there's clearly a need for more double-blind randomized trials because there is concern that mo many of the studies rely on subjective parent reports. And there's a need for more objectivity. And as I mentioned, rigorous trials are difficult to implement. Other conclusions that are worth mentioning is that it seems that there may be possibly a subset of potential responders. These are likely to be those that have GI disorders. Future research may need to target them with inclusion-exclusion criteria and have more homogeneous samples for comparative studies. And we are aware that there are several ongoing studies, uh, one nearing completion at the time we completed our review, uh, that are going to provide more information for us regarding the efficacy of the gluten-free, casein-free diet. Thank you.